Hey guys, it's Brandon Miniman from PocketNow.com. You know, the Galaxy Nexus was and still is a really great phone. But many of you who have the Galaxy Nexus are probably wondering, should I upgrade to the Nexus 4? In this video, we're going to compare the two and help you decide. Let's get to it. So, can you tell these two devices apart? They do look very similar because they both have that very rounded edge design, although here on the Galaxy Nexus, it's even more rounded on the top and the bottom. Another way you can tell, can tell it's the Galaxy Nexus is because you get that bluish glow that's characteristic of Samsung's Super AMOLED displays. The Nexus 4 has an LCD panel, a very good LCD panel, so when it's turned off, it's completely black, and it is kind of handsome because it's got that nice panel of glass that is on the entire front of the device and it wraps around the edges, whereas on the Galaxy Nexus you also get a curved piece of glass, but it doesn't have that really cool effect that wraps around the edges. There's a little bit of a taper here, but not that much. Now another cool thing about Galaxy Nexus and the Nexus 4 both is that they are, they are buttonless designs. So when they're off, they look really cool. And uh, something that's kind of new on the Nexus 4 is that because this is flat back here, you've got this extra handle to grip the phone with, because there are no buttons here. The buttons take place right here on the screen. So this is a great way to hold the phone if you're uh, reading a book or if you're watching a movie. That was possible on the Galaxy Nexus, but it's definitely smaller, and you get this hump back here, which kind of makes it a little bit awkward to hold, but that hump actually helps the Galaxy Nexus, especially when typing, uh, because when you're typing on the Galaxy Nexus, you can wrap your fingers around the device and kind of rest them on this hump. Plus, there's some weighting at the bottom of the phone, so it just feels pretty darn good. On the Nexus 4, you don't get that hump. Typing is definitely a little bit more uncomfortable on the Nexus 4. It's something to get used to. Plus, the screen sensitivity is worse on the Nexus 4. We're going to talk about why in a few minutes. So now that we're on the back, let's talk about the differences here. Uh, the Galaxy Nexus has this plasticky textured design, which is very functional. It's not the most beautiful thing ever, but it's definitely functional because it lends to a really great in-hand feel, and it also is grippy. The Nexus 4 kind of goes the beauty route because this backing is definitely beautiful in the way that it catches the light. Look at that. That is awesome. Uh, but of course, it's also a liability because you can get more fingerprints on the back. And of course, if you drop the phone, you're twice as likely to crack something than you were on the Galaxy Nexus. Uh, while we're back here, we've got some speakers here, both of which are firing down if the phone is over on its back. They're going to be muted a little bit, unfortunately, but most phones are like that. We've got an 8 megapixel shooter here on the Nexus 4 and a 5 megapixel shooter on the Galaxy Nexus, so you get a camera upgrade. And in terms of other dimensions, looking at thickness, uh, the, the Nexus 4 is slightly thicker than the Galaxy Nexus. This is actually the Verizon version, so it's a tidbit thicker than the GSM version. If we set them on the table and try to feel a difference, uh, the, the Nexus 4 actually in the, in the bottom part here is thinner, and then as you move to the top and you get that tapered design of the Galaxy Nexus, the Galaxy Nexus becomes a little bit thinner. In terms of width, the Nexus 4 is a little bit wider, about one millimeter, and in, in terms of tallness, the Galaxy Nexus is just a little bit taller there. So let's talk about specifications now. The Galaxy Nexus has a TI OMAP 1.2 gigahertz dual core processor with one gigabyte of RAM. It's got a PowerVR SGX 540 GPU. And over here on the Nexus 4, much more impressive spec sheet, definitely. We've got the Qualcomm Snapdragon S4 Pro quad core running at 1.5 gigahertz. Uh, this is one of the fastest CPUs we've seen so far ever. It's running with the Adreno 320 GPU and two gigabytes of RAM and then one gigabyte of RAM here. In terms of storage options, you get 16 gigabytes, no micro SD expansion on the Galaxy Nexus, and 8 or 16 gigabytes on the Nexus 4 with, again, no option for expanding storage. And also, in terms of expansion, you can remove the battery on the Galaxy Nexus. You cannot remove the battery on the Nexus 4. But the Nexus 4 has a larger battery and has better battery life than the Galaxy Nexus, so hopefully you won't have to swap batteries. Uh, like you might have on the Galaxy Nexus. Okay, so let's boot these bad boys up and see which one turns on first. So we've got power buttons on the sides here. We're going to press them. Pressing, pressing. Vibration on both. Let's see which gets to the home screen first. Nexus logo.
And the Nexus 4 won by quite a bit, actually. And so while we're waiting for the Galaxy Nexus to start up, let's go into display settings, turn on brightness to 100%, because we're going to do some screen comparisons so you can see the difference between these two displays. And by the way, this, uh, this background is called, because I know a lot of you are going to be asking, Light Grid. It's a free live wallpaper. It is super sweet, and you can really customize it to do anything. Anyway, we're going to wait for the Galaxy Nexus to, uh, to, get, to get up into action here. All right, the Galaxy Nexus is on, and we're likewise going to turn on screen brightness to 100%, and then we're going to talk about uh, the Android version that we're running here, so you know what we're working with. So let's go back into the settings, go down to about... <laughs> the, the Nexus 4 really slides around on the table. In fact, I've witnessed it fall off the table when it was sitting in the middle of the table, and I just had some speakers playing music. This thing slides around like you wouldn't believe, which is why I think it's great that Google's selling a bumper uh, as an accessory. Let's go to About Phone. We're actually running 4.1.1 here. It's a stock image right from Google. Um, the Galaxy Nexus is going to get the 4.2 update. It's actually rolling out now, but it's not going to increase performance. It's just going to add features. So we really didn't feel compelled to upgrade it to 4.2 uh, because most people that have a Galaxy Nexus right now are probably running it with 4.1.1 anyway. So as you can see on the screens here, they look different right off the bat. Uh, color saturation, you get that super color saturation of the AMOLED panel. The blue strip up here is bluer uh, than the Nexus 4 over here, and also this gradient is a totally different color. We, we saw this in the iPhone 5 comparison. We'll put a link up on the video. The, the Nexus 4 has a warm screen. Now something else that the now, something else that the Nexus 4 does differently is that the touch sensor is actually laminated to the screen. And so this is going to be really difficult to show on camera. Uh, but the depth between the actual layer of glass and where the screen starts is bigger, meaning on the Galaxy Nexus, the screen looks kind of sunken in a little bit, and, and see if you can tell that. Look around the edge of the phone here, and maybe that's a, a good place to look. Over on the Nexus 4, you kind of hear this a lot about modern screens, but it's definitely true here. The screen is right on the top, and if I kind of twist it in the light here, maybe you can see that too. But there's a downside to that, and we see this with the iPhone 5, which has the same in-cell uh, display technology. The screen sensitivity is worse on the Nexus 4 to the point where typing can be frustrating. Zooming feels imprecise. It might be a software issue, but I think it's actually a hardware issue. So that's something to keep in mind. Uh, it's, it's not a deal breaker, but it definitely means you're going to have to slow down a little bit when typing. You're going to have to get used to a more numb feeling display. But if you can get past that, the display on the Nexus 4 is incredible. So let's talk about the displays. Here on the Galaxy Nexus, we have a 1280 by 720 display display. It was the second 720p smartphone display. The first was the HTC Resound, and it's a 4.65 inch screen making for a PPI of 316. And as a result, because the PPI is over 300, you can't see pixels. I mean, this is a great screen. And because you have Super AMOLED, blacks are just super black. Colors are oversaturated. Some people like that. Some people hate it. Now, over here on the Nexus 4, we've got higher res display going up a little bit. We've got that same 1280 down, but now 7, 6, 8 across. Does that matter? Well, we're going to open up some websites and, and try to note the difference between the two. It's a 4.7 inch display, making for a PPI slightly higher, really not important here, 320 PPI versus 316. And again, because the PPI is over that 300 threshold, you can't see pixels, which is, which is nice. Actually, let's go into settings and see some text in front of us. If the camera will focus, that would be awesome. And as you can see, the text is just super sharp and smooth. But then again, it was super sharp and smooth on the Galaxy Nexus. Okay, so let's see which device is faster. We're going to do a lot of tests here, starting with just app launch speed. So we're going to try to launch Facebook at the exact same time. One, two, three, go. Faster on the Nexus 4, definitely. Let's try to launch Twitter. One, two, three, go. Right off the bat, definitely faster on the Nexus 4 by about a half a second or so. Let's launch the Play Store. One, two, three, Play Store. Faster on the Galaxy Nexus. That was really interesting, actually. All right, camera, very important. Let's see. Uh, one, two, three, go. Faster on the Nexus 4. Do that again just to double check. Go. 
Yep, faster on the Nexus 4. And let's try bad piggies. One, two, three, go. Faster on the Nexus 4 across the board. And it, that's the way it should be going from generation to generation. Now, it's only faster in launching apps by like one second. And does one second matter to you? Well, it matters to me, um, but maybe it doesn't matter to you. We're really trying to help you decide if it's worth upgrading from the Galaxy Nexus to the Nexus 4 in this video. Now let's go into the web browser. Now on the Nexus 4, unfortunately, uh, Google has included the Chrome browser as the stock browser. And I say unfortunately because the Chrome browser is not as fast as the stock built-in Android browser. And I don't know why Google would release a browser as the default browser on their flagship phone that isn't as fast as an alternative. Um, it's just not as fast. Okay, let's jump into the browser here. One, two, three, go. Now, Chrome does have some awesome features. It has awesome tab management. It has browser sync, password sync. It's a really great browser. It's just not as fast as this browser, although it's probably going to be faster in this particular test because we're getting the power of the S4 Pro here. So what we want to do first here is go to pocketnow.com. It went to a search page, so we had to, uh, to bring it up separately here. So now take a look at these screens, and you're wondering, does a 768 uh, horizontal resolution matter in terms of how much stuff displays on the screen? Well, let's take a look. Uh, over here on the Galaxy Nexus, we actually see more screen content, uh, oddly. Uh, this is the bottom story that's over here, and it's just really a matter of the zoom settings of the particular browser. So let's move around on the page on the Galaxy Nexus. Very good performance, no white at all, or checkerboards. Scrolling down here on the Nexus 4, likewise. Let's double tap to zoom in. Tap, tap. Pretty much the same there. Let's zoom out. Got a little white stuff over here, but on the, on the Nexus 4, it was still clear. Let's do a pinch to zoom. And, and look, what, look at what just happened, because I mentioned that the touch responsiveness is not as good. I'm going to pinch the exact same amount and release at the exact same time. You're going to see that the touch responsiveness is totally out of whack here. Watch this. See, look at my fingers. It was the same amount of pinch, but it doesn't seem that the screen is registering a pinch until like a couple of millimeters after I do the pinch. Whereas over here, as soon as you put your fingers on the screen, it registers a pinch. And hopefully you can see that on video. Anyway, it's, it's just a little bothersome, uh, but it's something you can get used to. So let's move around on the page and load something else. Let's double tap to zoom in. It's all right, let's move in on a feature over here, Nexus 4 versus iPhone 5. You should check that out. And let's see which gets there first. We're watching the progress bar, the progress bar, and both over Wi-Fi, of course. And the, Nex the Galaxy Nexus finished first, although it looks like the, the Nexus 4 has finished loading the page. And we can move down on the page. And let's see which renders this video first. It gets it ready to go to watch on the screen. One, two, three. And we're going to actually stop this because it seems to be having some problems. One, two, three, play. Hey guys, it's Brandon. Oh, that is loud. Um, faster on the Nexus 4 there. Okay, now let's go to The Verge, another image heavy website, and see which loads it first. All right, and we're loaded here. Let's scroll down the page. Very smooth on both. A little bit of white space there. That's what I'm talking about. On an S4 Pro, with an S4 Pro chip, there just should never be any hesitation in the browser. And I think that's probably because of the Chrome, uh, the Chrome browser that we're using here. So let's double tap to zoom in. Uh, Nexus 4 cleared up a little bit faster. Let's get really close to text and bring it in close to see how text looks on the screen. Again, razor sharp screens on both. You can't see pixels uh, on neither device. It's just a very, very high pixel density uh, experience on both. Okay, so in terms of web browsing performance, uh, it's really a draw. And I think that if, if Google had included the stock Android browser on the Nexus 4, it would have smoked the, the Galaxy Nexus because it's got a faster processor, but Chrome slows things down. We're going to first run Quadrant Standard here. So Quadrant Standard, see which loads it first. Again, the Nexus 4 is ahead on pretty much everything by about seconds. We're going to run full benchmark, and we'll come back with the scores. And the results are in, and the Nexus 4 finished quite ahead of the Galaxy Nexus. We're going to click yes. Let's see what we get. That is very interesting. So <laughs> very low scores, actually, on both devices, maybe because there's a lot of stuff running. Who knows? Your device, 2160. That doesn't seem right. And 4569. We're going to have to run this again. That must be an anomaly. That is just super weird. 
All right, second round is done. Let's see what we get here. All right, and, and this is really the problem with benchmarks is that they, they can be inconsistent. You could run it one second, get a huge score, run it the next second, and get a low score. They're fun. Uh, we've got some better results here. Uh, 4,800. We were seeing results in the 7,000s here on the Nexus 4. And over here, we've got just 2122 on the Galaxy Nexus. Let's do another benchmark. We've got Geekbench ready to go here, so let's load that up. Uh, and then we're going to conclude this video with some closing remarks. And the Geek Bench 2 results are in, and we get pretty much double the score here on the Nexus 4. Does that mean that the Nexus 4 is twice as fast as the Galaxy Nexus? No, in fact, you just saw a battery of tests that proved that, uh, in most cases, the Nexus 4 is about a second faster, maybe maybe uh, 15 to 20% faster. Uh, benchmarks really just calculate the raw processing power of the CPU. So in conclusion, let's sum up why you should upgrade from the Galaxy Nexus and why you might not want to upgrade from the Galaxy Nexus. Number one, the design is much improved. It's a beautiful device with some handsome design elements that is unlike anything else on the market. Number two, the Qualcomm S4 Pro chip is fast, like real fast, and developers probably really haven't taken advantage of it yet. Definitely the Chrome web browser doesn't take advantage of it yet, so hopefully in the future we will see even further enhancements to Android and third-party apps to take advantage of this awesome CPU. Uh, next, the display. It's higher resolution than the, Gal than the Galaxy Nexus. It's just beautiful. It's more balanced. You don't get that extreme color saturation. It has fantastic viewing angles. It just looks darn good. And also there are some niceties like Android 4.2 right out of the box, which brings some cool features like Photosphere, new notification features, and some other stuff like wireless charging. Uh, the, the Nexus 4 has wireless charging with the Qi wireless charging standard, so you can go out right now and buy a wireless charging device and set it on there and have it charge. And also, early indications is that the Nexus 4 has much better battery life than the Galaxy Nexus, thanks to its larger battery, and the S4 Pro probably has something to do with it. Now, why wouldn't you want to upgrade to the Nexus 4? Well, it's not that much faster than the Galaxy Nexus in day-to-day -day performance. It's about a second faster when launching apps. To some, that might be significant. To others, not so much. In the web browser, it's kind of a tie in a lot of the cases. Nexus 4 is just slightly faster. Uh, sometimes than the, the Galaxy Nexus. It's not night and day. Um, also, screen sensitivity is an issue. If you get your Nexus 4 or you go to a Best Buy, for example, and test it out, you're going to notice that the screen sensitivity is a little bit numb because of this in-cell touch display technology. Again, it's not a deal breaker. It's something to get used to. The Galaxy Nexus had awesome touch display sensitivity. And finally, the Nexus 4 has no removable battery. Uh, as did the Galaxy Nexus, which was really nice, and it has no removable storage like the Galaxy Nexus. So you're stuck with either 8 gigabytes or 16 gigabytes of storage. But of course, the price on the, on the Nexus 4 is so incredibly good at 299 or 349 So overall, the Nexus 4 is not a sure upgrade uh, for Galaxy Nexus owners. There are some trade-offs. It's definitely a better phone overall, but it's not a huge mega leap. And hopefully this video was helpful in you deciding for yourself. If you like this video, please give us a thumbs up and thanks for watching. That's it for now.